Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to add offline voice controls to a .NET desktop app using Pika Voices .NET SDK. To take full advantage of our SDK's cross-platform capability, we're going to be using a cross-platform GUI framework called Avalonia. Okay, let's get started. So here I have a very simple application and you can see just by clicking these radio buttons we change the color of the background. So this application is based on the Avalonia MVVM template, and we've really just added some basic code here to bind the radio buttons to the view model and then have it change the window color when there is checked property is set to true. So our goal here is going to be to allow the user to change the selected radio button with voice commands. So to do this, we're going to head to NuGet and grab the Porcupine WakeWord Engine package by Pico Voice, and this is going to give us everything we need for WakeWord detection except audio capture. For that, we're going to need OpenAL, which is a cross-platform audio library, and that can be found in the OpenTK package on NuGet. So with those two packages added to our project, we can import their namespaces here, uh, PV for Pico Voice and OpenTK.audio.openAL to grab OpenAL. Okay, let's start coding. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an instance of the Porcupine class and we're going to call it porcupine and we're going to use the porcupine.create factory method and there's a selection of properties here that you can initialize most importantly you need to tell it which keywords to detect so you can either give it a list of paths to custom keyword files that you've created through the pika voice console or you can initialize it with a selection of built-in keywords a list of which can be found in the porcupine.builtin keywords constant so in this case, we're going to initialize it with a list of built-in keywords. And these will be the four wake words that correspond to the four radio buttons in our UI. In order for Porcupine to detect a keyword, we're going to have to pass it frames of incoming audio. Since we're working with 16-bit audio, we're going to create a buffer of shorts. And the size will be specified by Porcupine's frame length property. Next, we're going to create an OpenAL capture device. And we're going to pass it a null to device name to use the default device. And then we're going to tell it to record at the sample rate that Porcupine specifies, as well as mono 16-bit and a buffer size of length times 2 because that's in bytes. So we should expect 2 bytes per sample. So once we've told OpenAL what kind of recording properties we want, we can tell it to start audio capture. Once we've started audio capture, we want to basically keep pulling the microphone for samples and this is going to require an audio loop. In order to avoid blocking the UI thread, we're actually going to want to start the audio loop on a separate thread. So we're going to start a new task and put all the wake word detection code on it. Now that it's on a different thread, we can start writing the audio loop. So for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to make it an infinite loop, though in a real world scenario, you'd want to make sure you cancel out of this loop when you're done keyword detection. Now we're going to ask the capture device how many samples it's captured, and if that amount is enough to fill a frame for Porcupine, then we're going to want to copy those samples over into our frame buffer. And the way we'll do that is with the OpenAL capture samples function. So we're going to want to pass it a pointer to the first index of the frame buffer, and then we're going to tell it to copy over a, a whole Porcupine frame of audio. And then this frame, we're going to pass into the porcupine process function, which is going to process this frame. And the return from this function is going to tell us whether a keyword was detected or not. If it returns a minus one, a keyword was not detected. But if it returns an index, a valid index, into our keyword list, then it's one of the keywords we gave it. So in our case, we have four keywords. So we're expecting an index uh, 0, 1, two or three, uh, which would correspond to grapefruit, grasshopper, bumblebee, and blueberry, respectively. And in this switch statement, I'm basically just writing the logic to alter our UI based on which voice command we heard. So all we're doing is changing the is checked property for the appropriate radio button. So that's actually all the code we need to write. So we'll launch the app and try it out. And I'll just drag it over here and say the keywords grapefruit, grasshopper,
bumblebee, blueberry, grapefruit. And there you have it.